Indiana Outdoor Adventures TV show is coming on and don't you know they've got a new adventure planned just for you you'll be wishing you were in the Indiana Outdoors too it may be hunting could be fishing keeping alive some old tradition from the days of long ago well head on out without a doubt with us you can go on the indiana outdoor adventures tv show welcome to indiana outdoor adventures i'm max Spanar, bill kirchkesson we're in southern indiana at an old-fashioned hog butchering uh, bill this is a family tradition here Tell me a little bit about it. I know you're, uh, you're we're about roughly the same age, and yeah. tell me when you started. Tell me a little bit about the family history here. Well, I've been doing it since I was a kid. I was brought up with it, and my dad was doing it back in the 50s, probably back in the 40s, 1940s, and they've been doing it all their time too. So we just kind of carried on from year to year, and just kind of, you know, we do it all the time. And you're from a big family. How many siblings you got? There's 10, 10 of us in the family. Ten Kirchcasters, so you're yeah, I'm right in the middle. You're right in the middle? That's good. <laughs> That's great. So I've been coming up here, I think I'm on about my eighth or ninth, maybe tenth year. Yeah. And uh, this is something. To, to be able to get a hog here and get in here, you have to almost be on a waiting list. You're on a waiting list, Mike. You can't get in here and just walk up today and say you want a hog. you got to get on a waiting list. That's how uh, much people love coming and doing this. It's... And what's really great, Troy, you've said it, we got 22 hogs here. But all of a sudden, we got 40 or 50 guys here working. It's, so not everybody's getting a hog. Right. It's just the family and everybody get together. It's a good good time. See, it's a great, everybody, yeah. the camaraderie is just unbelievable. Yeah. Now, we talked about, I want to talk about your dad. Ed, for yeah. years, he just passed away. Right. And um, he was always here. And he was the uh, patriarch of the family. He was the ramrod of yeah. it all. And uh, what I liked seeing was when Ed would come there and be sitting down by the stove in there and he'd be looking yeah. at Bill saying, Bill, what about this? What about that? <laughs> it didn't matter, did it? Yeah. It didn't matter how old we got. Our dads were still yeah. our dads. So yeah. uh, unfortunately he passed away this last this past year and uh, we all miss him. This is kind of a dedication yeah, to him and, and your family. Uh, we are in Southern Indiana. Now you used to raise hogs, right? Yeah. I quit about 10 years ago. About 10 years ago. So now what you do is you Tell me a little bit about that. I go up uh, up uh, Washington County. I go up there and buy them off of a farmer up there instead of raising them. And I know the guy up there, and I just go up there and buy them from him. So. Okay. And now a little bit about the operation. Troy, we've been running around with the camera today. We yeah. started at the shooting uh, barn, and then we move over, and we soak them in. What are they soaking them in? We're putting them in water. It's uh, 145 degrees, and we're scalding them and taking the hair and that off of them. And then uh, roll them on the table, take it off. Then we go back there and uh, and you gut them in that. Then. So then they're scraping them. We see yeah. that scraping where they're taking that hair off, and they're moving fast. Those yeah. guys move gotta fast. You got to do it quick while so it while they're up. right, so it don't set. And then we they take that table, move it over, and they yeah. and they uh, it's gut a, them. It's assembly line basically. It is assembly line. We got her line. set down, set pretty good. And tell me, people, there's parts of this pig that people eat, all parts, right? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that, like. I noticed we got a heart table and we got a liver yeah, table and, and we you got, got a head table. Yeah, we got all that, uh, the heart and liver and all that. And we used to eat the brains and stuff like that. but <laughs> We don't do the brains We don't anymore. do that no more. But now, guys, they take those heads and they cut the Joel bacon Yeah, off. we get the Joel bacon and uh, Brother Tim usually gets the tongues and stuff like that. Brother <laughs> Tim likes the tongues? He likes the tongues. See, there's hardly, a, they say there's, there's hardly nothing waste. wasted. Yeah. Well, it's great. And then we even take the uh, gut pile and put them out in yeah. the field. Try to feed the coyotes around. We huh? feed the coyotes, try to get rid of some of them. That's good. Um, well, when inside, the biggest part was if you're outside, we're dressed, we're dressed warm because right now it's probably, uh, what, 30 degrees, yeah. about 30 degrees out. So it's really cold. So you dress if you're going to be in the outside barn. Yeah. But then when you go in the inside barn, it doesn't take long to start yeah. melting. Yeah. Troy was in there melting. He was trying to shift a few <laughs> pounds. So I said, well, you can do it in there. That yeah. steam rolling off and yeah. all that. But, uh, uh, this tradition is going to keep going, right? Right. We're going to keep it going. That's what Dad would want to do. That's so what he said that. So He did? Yeah. Wow. You know, it's just, uh, we just keep it going. All my brothers comes up here and that, and sisters and that, few of them comes up. 
And, and, and your mom's still alive? Mom's she's still up there. Right here, and she's doing the she, inside, right? She's the head cook up there. Head cook? Yeah. She, see, she sees to it that it gets done. She's got to have so many desserts and all that made. And, that, and we got her chili and chicken soup and all that coming down there in a minute. So it, on the first day when we're here, that's what we do. We, we do all the butchering. Yeah. And the ladies up there make all the food. Yeah. Sometimes we send some of the guys, right? Matt, yeah. we make them. Every once in a while, yeah. We, uh, once we don't want down here. That's right. We send, we send them up. Send them up. <laughs> so then now they got chili, chicken soup, and desserts. Yep. And then when we finish up here, 22, yeah. 22 hogs. We start at 7.30ish, 8 in the morning. Yeah. And we're done by 1. We should be done by 11.30, Mike. By 11.30. Yeah. That's usually, we're, Usually we're always done by 11.30. Yeah. Yeah. And now tomorrow, what we do is half of the people come back, and yep. that's when we butcher, yeah, that's when we cut them up. Cut them up, and that's when we eat our sausage. And that's that. when we eat our sausage. We season it just right, don't we? That's right. We <laughs> eat sausage from nothing in it to hot. Yeah, there right? we go. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we love it. Yeah. Love it, it very There's much. nothing better than fresh sausage like that. So. And Skinner, he'll come back, and he'll cook for us. Yeah. But we always seem to have real cold weather, and we always seem to be real hot inside. Yeah. We're always messing with it. Yep. That's uh, a, tell yeah. me a little bit about family tradition and uh, growing up on the farm. And did this start out literally just for the family? And how did it grow? No, it started back with my grandpa and all that. My grandpa and my uncles, they started it years ago, back in the 20s and 30s. You know, we used to go up there. And then it came back here once my, my dad moved up here in 1960. And that's shortly right after that, they start doing it here too. So they was doing it at both places instead of just the one place. So probably 1960, well no, they was doing it before 1960 because they started up there. It used to be a house up there by the knobs. So, but uh, it's just a family thing. It started with my uncles and grandpa and all that. And uh, it's just been carrying on since. Well, let me ask you, back then, what'd they farm here on the farm? Uh, it was just, uh, well, we used to pick uh, tomatoes and cantaloupes and cucumbers, everything really here at that time. Uh -huh. And then your soybeans and corn too. And you raise cattle? Yeah, we got cattle. We used to have a bunch of pigs. I used to have about four to 500 head of pigs here at the time, you know, but uh, we kind of got out of that because the price wasn't there. We wasn't making nothing and we just got out of and it. And now the whole farm is a cantaloupe farm. Yeah, that's basically, we got out of it and we just uh, uh, made our cantaloupe start raising more of them is what we did. So, which is these cantaloupes go all over, yeah, all over southern Indiana, yeah, west southern Indiana and Louisville, Kentucky. In Louisville, in there. Kentucky. We're going to Louisville, yeah. So, this so farm's been in, uh, been in your family, yeah, for uh, many, 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 many years. years, yeah. But, yeah, we supply like your Walmarts and your Mars and your JC stores in southern Indiana and Louisville. So, so this family tradition, yeah, your dad was here, he got it from his dad. Yeah. And now you you took over the farm, you, you transformed it a little bit, yeah. you go to the cantaloupes and you still do the hog. Yeah. And then and then one day there's going to be little Billy, I guess, or somebody well, else. We're working on that right now. So you're saying <laughs> little Billy could He's be the 19 next one. years old and yeah. That's what we're wanting to happen. So yeah, we're we're wanting to keep it in the Kurt Cashner yeah, family, Keep right? it on going down the line. Oh, yeah. That's good. Welcome back to Indiana Outdoor Adventures. We're back here on the farm in southern Indiana with Jerry Kirchkeschner. He, uh, one of the brothers of the family, Kirchkeschner family, where we're here butchering hogs. This is, we've been talking about this, Jerry, it's a family tradition here. And when we say, we have that family tradition, I mean family tradition. Uh, so we've really covered that with your brother, Bill. I'd like for you to tell us a little bit about the stages. Tell us how all the stages that you go through here. Well, we got three stages. One is where you, you kill a pig kill the pig and you, you uh, stick it and make sure it bleeds out right. And that's where uh, Bill fits in at. He's always down there taking care of that. second stage is where we scald it and the temperature is 145 degrees and we leave it in there for uh, seven and a half minutes and then 
we bob it up and down just to make sure it, the pig don't set because you just leave it sitting there it'll set and the hair won't come off very well but after five minutes we kind of do the legs and scrub the legs because it's easier after five minutes because the legs gets done quicker than the whole body okay jerry now don't forget about having to get that 300 pound hog from the killing barn into the butchering shed uh this truly was like an assembly line these guys had uh, an area where they dispatched the hog. Then they had another guy with a, uh, a bobcat with a bucket there they uh, loaded it into, and uh, then they would drive it up. Now, when they get up to the uh, uh, the, the butchering uh, part of the, the operation, they got the garage door that opens up, and they take the front end loader in, and, and they dump the hog in. But, oh, my gosh, there was so much steam from the hot air meeting the cold air. Then after that, we go, we dig it out of there by chains and we take it to the table. And that's where they really, that's where the most work's at, is at the table, because they got to get on it real quick to get the hair off, because you leave it sit there on the table, it won't come off, and you got to really work harder. So the quicker you work, the, the more easier it's come off. Then the last stage is back there where they gut it, and then the, that's my brother Tim's back there. And they, I'm actually never back there, but they got it. They got it. They got it. Take, they burn off all the hair. Brother Steve's back there, and they burn off all the hair. Then he got it, and then take the liver and that out, and the heart, and then they cut off the head, and that's where that's at. Now. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Got it. Nice. Let her rip. Man, you hit it with that guy. This gets a whole lot cleaner, though. I know they are. This is a block one. And that's why you see uh, Jerry here's dressed uh, for his stage. If you're outside, we were talking about it. You'll you'll be out here. It's 30 degrees out here right now. Right. So it's freezing cold out. And then when you walk in, it's a lot warmer. So you came out all wet and probably Nasty. gonna be like one big ice. Yeah, cube. I'm an ice cube right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. So and and this has been going on. How old are you? I'm 47. So and you're one of the pups. Yep. So and this has been going on way before I was born. <laughs> Go ahead. Awesome. Uh, tell me about uh, what kind of what kind of pigs they are. Is there a difference between the kind of pigs you get? How big are they? How much meat do we get from them? All the hogs we get is roughly 290 to 300 pounds, and we kind of weigh them on. Well, Brother Bill brings them here, and they weigh them on a, a trailer, and it's weigh the whole trailer, and they divide it up, and that's the reason we just divide it up into 23 pigs, and that's how we. Uh, all these guys pay us, so that's the and what we way. pay is the uh, the amount of what the pig is worth on the market. On the so, market. and it's a whole lot cheaper coming up here than going to the store because it probably costs twice as much going to the store than coming up here. Plus, you know, it's it's a family tradition. Mac and I are having a really good time today at the uh, old-fashioned hog butchering, but. I had to get on camera just to make sure that we got some things corrected. Yeah. Max, Max said twice now that it's 30 degrees out here and it's 18 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> I think, Mac, you've been inside too much. The uh, uh, temperature out today is a bitter, uh, brisk 18. And uh, uh, I'll tell you what, it really is. It's been interesting on the camera uh, going from this cold 
into the butchering shed yep. where they're doing all the scraping and the butchering and because you got all that steam in there and the heat in there and everybody's taking their coats off in there uh, it is a huge difference uh uh, from one one stage to to the next uh, but we're really having a good time and it's amazing I, I just can't get over the number of people that are here oh it's, yeah I thought it was just a family type thing no, we, it's a family tradition but with that tradition this family so well liked and thought of here in, in, in yeah. Starlight Indiana that uh, everybody wants to come yeah so and everybody that comes usually tries to do something it, right now we've run, we got more people than jobs. Yeah, there, there really is. There's a bunch of guys just trying to get in to help, but there's almost too many of them. Now, you, you'd mentioned you kind of got started uh, with this annual hog butchering thing about eight years ago. Yep. How'd you get your invite? I, uh, I, I came up here one day and just, I heard about this and while I was working yeah. as an officer and I came up and I saw these guys and I knew a bunch of them. And I said, man, how can I get involved? And they said, well, kind of got to get on a list. And I'm like, a list? Yeah. So I ended up putting my name down on a list, and I said, when the first person gets out, I'd like a hog. And that's kind of how it is done. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's almost like getting tech tickets for the Green Bay Packers. You get on a waiting list, and it might be one year, it might be 10 years. So you've got your hog that you're getting this year. Mm -hmm. uh, 300-pound hog, you'll get? Oh, you figure you'll be at uh, about, what? 40 percent, 50 percent. Somebody you get, you lose yeah. some in the guts, uh, in but, the head, yeah, in the head and stuff like that. But but we'll come down. I usually have about we do the sausage. Mm. Tori ate one oh, of the sausage good. sandwiches today. Good. Uh, so we and you can season it any way we want. And um, so what we did, we we get about anywhere from 55 to 75 pounds of sausage. Okay. Two big hams. Yeah. Um, and sometimes I take the bacon. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I put it in. I get Joel bacon. Um, and that's about what I take. Yeah. So yeah, it, I, I get a lot of meat. Yeah. It lasts my, it lasts our family of the whole year. Now I noticed uh, one of the kind of traditions along the way, the the new guy coming in, mm -hmm. you kind of have to take uh, get to be the trigger man one time. Yeah, they're gonna stick you on the gun one time or another. And when you get there, they, and if you if it messes up, they're gonna rib you. And I've been there, and I've done that. So uh, to the point where they've made a plaque about me <laughs> and, uh, and they did a big ceremony up here one day. So this is not for the soft of heart. If you, you come up here and you can't take a little ribbon, you're not gonna last very long. Now, now the idea is to put one twenty-two bullet kind of right above between the eyes. We do the X, we go from ear to eye, ear to eye, and that's where you shoot. And I shot them all clover leafed and I, I said they took the bullet out of the, out of the uh, twenty-two Four rib. times. <laughs> <laughs> Four, Four times. <laughs> Four In fact, times. You'll, you'll notice this plaque that they made for Mac, it's got four little uh, <laughs> bullet holes on the head on the hog. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, one of the guys makes monuments and it's a, uh, it's not a historical mo a, a marker, it's a hysterical marker. Hysterical marker. And uh, they literally, 40 guys got out here and made a big presentation and uh, they gave that to me. So I'm kind of notorious, so if somebody misses back there or, or the hog doesn't die right away, then they are all screaming, you shoot like Spain hour. Now, you're always kind of hoping something unique and interesting happens. <laughs> yeah. Today, we had a hog get loose. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He gave it his last effort and <laughs> crashed through the gate and scrambled. He actually got out of the barn before he got corralled and back in again. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I heard all of them uh, rattle. The guys in the barn that dress lighter don't come out very much because yeah. it's so hot. But they can look out the windows, and if they see anybody messing up out there, they'll scream and holler. Man, I'll tell you what. Now, day two uh, is when we actually get into... Uh, the hog has been butchered and now you're going to cut it up into your choice cuts and you're going to mix your sausage and you have this big taste off. Tell me a little bit about the taste off. Tony, which one? Has this got a lot of sage? Or yeah, not? no. You can taste it. Yeah. That's, 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 that's better here. <laughs> Bo, did you try that? The taste off, when we do the taste off, and when we do the taste off, we uh, the, the tomorrow what we'll do is like uh, my family likes spicy okay. sausage, so what we'd like to do is we put in cayenne peppers, a lot of sage, and uh, and then so ours is usually the hottest, and then the guy down at the bottom and everything in between he doesn't put anything in. One year he just put salt, and then he, next year he cut that out. So we'll have anything variety. So what we do is when they make ours. You donate a big wad, they patty it out, they fry it, then they bring it back and, and everybody tastes it. Okay. And then you can say, like if you're a newcomer, yeah. you can say, well, I kind of like mine a little more spicy or I like mine not near as spicy. And then you can taste test until you can say, fix mine like his. And then that's how they do. And then if you want pork chops three quarter inch, order three quarter inch. If you want half inch, half inch. If you want bacon, you take bacon. If you want Joe bacon, you, you can take it. If you don't, you can trade it. It's a, it's a great thing that, that they have here. And you know what I like about it? This is the way it started. Yeah. This is the way it's really done. So when they, when you do that, uh, you know, for the people that just that just go in and buy some, pit, some uh, pork. A pork in the store and they don't really know where it comes from, this is how, where this it started. Is it. You know, there's a lot to be said for family traditions, life on the farm. Uh, this is rural America. Mm -hmm. This is... Indiana Outdoor Adventures. We'll see you next time for more adventures, more family traditions, right here on Indiana Outdoor Adventures.